Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, the list goes on. Social media. There's so much social media in the world now. How the hell do we know which platform to post on? A lot of us wake up in the morning and we, we check our Facebook. Do we then post an update to Facebook? Do we then go to Instagram? Do we then go to Twitter? Do we then go to Snapchat? A lot of people are just like, Snapchat, why the hell do I have to do that? I've just got into Snapchat. And it all gets a little bit overwhelming. Do you have to do like one piece of content for Snapchat, one piece of content for Instagram, one piece of content, and it just goes on and on and on and on. And it can get overwhelming, especially if you're a small business owner and you're trying to build up your following, trying to get likes, trying to get followers. Which social media platform do you go on? Which one do you put all your energy into? Do you discard the others? Do you just focus on one? Do you just focus on two? Or is there a way to cover all of your social media? Or should you just pack it up and throw it in and just say, you know what, I'm done with social media <laughs> altogether and live a happier life because of it? Well, we're going to find out today in today's episode. Today we're talking to a social media expert. She's also the founder of a company called Edgar which automates and recycles social media updates. And she joins us now from Austin, Texas, and her name is Laura Roda. Laura, how are you? Great to have you here. I'm wonderful. Thank you for having me. Great to have you here. I should just clarify. It's Meet Edgar, isn't it? It's not Edgar. It's Meet Edgar. Is that the name of the Well, company? we call the software Edgar. It's meetedgar.com. Gotcha. At meetedgar.com. Okay, very good. So, what is your story? Who are we talking to, Laura? What's your background? Yeah, so I'm a longtime entrepreneur. Well, long time for my age because uh, I've been working for myself since I was 22. So uh, it's almost 10 years now. Uh, I started out as a freelance web designer that moved into social media marketing consulting, that moved into social media information products and training. And then in 2014, I launched a social media software, which is Edgar. So I've kind of been in the social media world a really long time and explored all different business models related to it. So when you first started out as a, maybe not as an entrepreneur, but just playing around with social media, what were you using and you know, what were the, the pros and cons of that, if you will? Well, the first, I mean, obviously there was like Friendster and MySpace and all that stuff, you know, before I was using them for business. The first real tool that I was on early from a business use was Twitter. So I signed up for Twitter in, I guess, 2007. And that's when my web design clients kind of started poking around at social media. What, what is this? Should businesses use it? You know, soon after Facebook introduced their fan pages, should I have one? So that's kind of when I came on to the, the social media scene when, when Twitter was starting. And so did you literally post to Facebook one day and Twitter the next day, Facebook six times a day and Twitter six? Like what was the, the kind of like the archaic way of doing things, if you will? Well, yeah, I mean, the archaic way was just, um, yeah, before there were scheduling tools. So you did everything live. Also, in the beginning, the tools um, weren't really marketing channels, you know, which, which was good if you were using them as marketing channels, because I think you could be like a lot more sly, right? Like it feels like, oh, I'm just making friends on Twitter. Like, by the way, I want to sell you something. Um, now, you know, it's obvious a company wants to sell you something when they have an account on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. Well, just to clarify, um, this episode is very much designed for entrepreneurs, but we're, it's going to be pertinent to you if you if you don't own your own business and you're just, you know, wanting to put a message out into the world and communicate well with your friends. Like, what's a polite uh, social media message versus what's a salesy or impolite sales message? So, this is for if you are an entrepreneur or you are a business owner or you're wanting to get a message out, and also if you're just, you know, wanting to chill and hang out with your friends on, on social media. Well, and there's, a voice. A, there's a really, really big difference between know, hanging out yeah. with your friends and, and using social media as a marketing channel. And I think that's actually where a lot of the confusion comes in when people try to use it for marketing because things you do for marketing would be really weird if you were just using social media to chat with your friends. Right. Well, we're going to clarify. We're going to make the distinction as we go through this. Um, okay. So that was the kind of like, and then what was the progression from there? Just before we get into a few little tips here, Laura, what was the progression after, you know, posting on Facebook, posting on Twitter? 
Um, some tools started getting introduced. You know, Hootsuite was one of the uh, the early leading tools. It's still a great tool. After Hootsuite, Buffer innovated by saying, okay, you don't have to schedule every post individually. You can add to a queue. And then at Edgar, we've innovated beyond that by saying you don't just have one giant queue that everything's mixed up in. You have several categories and you can decide the frequency of those categories going out. And you can fill a library with updates that cycle through over and over again instead of a queue that you have to constantly refill. That's kind of the, you know, very, very broad progression of some of the big scheduling tools for social media. Gotcha. Okay. And uh, so let's get into a few little nitty gritty tips here then. So let, let's deal with the, uh, let's just deal with the social person first who doesn't have a business. Like just mm-hmm. someone who's just has a social media account. Let's deal with that. And then we'll move on to a strategy for social media for people who are wanting to market products or services mm-hmm. or something mm-hmm. like that. So just for the, the fun kind of user, what, what, what tips do you have? What should you do and what should you not do? I mean, if you're just using social for fun, um, do what you want. I mean, it's honestly how I feel, right? Because you're kind of using it as a channel to express yourself, maybe connect with your friends. Um, I really honestly don't have a lot of, I mean, it's not really my area of expertise, I guess, but um, if you're just using it for fun, then just have fun with it. I think don't worry so much about it. I don't know if that's what you want to hear, but. (laughs) So be a social media troll, right? Just, you know, that dress is ugly. That guy sucks. If well, that's a, if that's your truth that you uh, that you want to express, <laughs> <laughs> but are there certain things from a social from just like a non entrepreneurial non marketing point of view that that you know is like a taboo like a like a frowned upon other than you know the obvious being a troll and saying negative stuff like is there some things that you know that people just don't want to see or hear for example it's like baby photos look at my amazing baby uh, or look, look at this amazing delicious meal that I had tonight. Or so blessed to be here in this world and, and, oh, wow, I just got a job promotion. I'm so happy. Like some of the, I know a lot of people find that stuff really irritating. Do you find uh, it irritating? Is there, is there some kind of et- etiquette around that? Uh, no, I'm really, you know, I'm really not being cagey. I just really believe like, I, I kind of don't like when people are like, oh, don't post, post baby photos. Because a lot of people do. I like seeing baby photos. I love it when my friends post baby photos. So Some you don't like it that I said I don't like baby photos. <laughs> right. I'm offended now. Really? Well, so you go. This is the beautiful thing about world. I, I get kind of irritated at all that stuff. I'm like, I'll, I'll tell you what I did just before we get into these, these entrepreneurial tips for the marketing strategy. I'll tell you what I did with my Facebook, Laura. Um, I realized about six months ago that I was spending – an inordinate amount of time on Facebook, too mm-hmm. much time staring at people. And it wasn't making me happy. In fact, it was actually sapping me of my happiness because I kept getting this glimpse into other people's seemingly perfect world. Now, <laughs> if, I was, if I was stronger, uh, you know, more, more self-assured, I wouldn't let that bother me. But obviously I wasn't because I was seeing other people like, I'm doing this, I'm doing this amazing thing. I'm this incredible, right. look, my amazing life. And I was like, why don't I have that life? Even though I've got that life. Even though I actually do what I want to do and I'm very happy, just the mere fact that I was looking at other people do that kind of made me feel like I had this, this longing or want or I was missing out on something. So I'll tell you what I did. I decided on five people only that I was going to follow on my Facebook. And I, I didn't unfollow people, but I just I unfollowed them from my news feed. Mm. So I kept all of my friends. They all think that I'm following them, which I still <laughs> am. I can still click on their profile. And right, them, right. But... In my news feed now, when I go to facebook.com, uh, I only have five. Now it's up to about seven people that I follow, including some family members and a couple of inspirational people like Tony Robbins. I follow Ty Lopez, who's a mentor of mine, and a couple of things. So if you're friends of mine, if you're a friend of mine and you're listening to this right now, I'm sorry. I'm probably not seeing your Facebook post in, in your news feed. But so that's, I think that actually kind of backs up what I'm saying, because I would just hate to make people feel bad, right? To say, oh, you should never post food because people hate that. Because you know what? Some people hate it and then they can unfollow you, which is what's so cool about these mediums, right? It's all opt-in. I get to choose what I see. You get to choose what you see. So I think have fun with it. If people don't like it, they don't have to look at it. Right. I'm being a little bit hypocritical as well because (laughs) on my Snapchat now, uh, which, which, and the handle is at James Swanick. It's just my name. I snap things of my food and walking in the street and going, Oh, look, this is great. It's amazing. So it is a choice. You can actually just say whatever you want. It's up to the viewer or the reader, if you like, what, what they choose to take in or not. 
I was really hoping you were going to say your Snapchat is only babies eating food. <laughs> Very good. Baby <laughs> food and me being grateful. I'm so grateful for my... <laughs> for all these babies with all this food. Yes. <laughs> all right. So there you go. So it's okay to post whatever you want on social media, but don't be a troll. I get sometimes on my Periscope or my Meerkat or my YouTube channel, uh, which are all called James Swanick, or even on podcast comments, I sometimes get trolls like criticizing. It's like, oh, come on. Like, it's not cool. It's not cool. Anyway, let's move on. So from a marketing strategy now for people who have a business, they're wanting to build their brand, they're wanting to sell a product, they're wanting to sell a service. What tips do we have, Laura? What, what's what's this, the overarching strategy before we get into some nitty gritty tips? Yeah. So, I mean, I think it's great that we started talking about using social for fun because I think most people start on social for fun, right? We sign up for Facebook to keep up with our pictures of our friends' babies eating, <laughs> to post our own babies eating. Um, so we're kind of used to coming at it from that angle. And then people get very nervous about marketing. And I think mm -hmm. people often go one way or the other. They think like, it, social media, I don't want to deal with it. If I'm going to promote my business, I'm just going to load up a bunch of things saying buy my stuff and then just schedule them and then never look at it because I don't want to deal with it. Or they're so scared to mention what they sell. I see this a lot where people are like, you know, we've been told so much provide value, provide value, where they're so focused on that value that like you never even know what, what their business is or, or what they do. And as we've talked about, social media is all opt in. So anyone who's following you on an account that's related to your business they obviously want to hear about your business. So mm. I think you need to make a shift into thinking about social media, not as like random chat updates, but this is actually a really powerful marketing channel. How am I going to plan my content? What type of content do I want to share? What sort of you know audience do I want to curate? What sort of uh, impression do I want to have on these marketing channels? Mm, okay. And so what's an example of a kind of impression? Is it like all positivity? Is it value, value, value? Is it like, like what, what are some examples? Well, yeah. So, I mean, you do want to think about how your brand comes across. Like a rule that I've always had for my brand is that we don't, uh, we don't post like rants or negative things about other people or companies. So some people, you know, will have a blog post like, you know, here's why I hate Citibank and here's all the things they did wrong um, in my customer experience. Like that's just a little rule we have that we don't really take that angle. Instead, we like to talk about what people are doing right. Um, the type of content that we share is about social media marketing, but it's also about entrepreneurship. It's also inspirational. We like to share what we do at our own company. Mm -hmm. um, and then we like to tell people about Edgar and why it could help them. And if we're having a sale or promotion or something like that, you know, we're including that in our, our social media mix. Okay. We're talking to Laura Roder from Edgar, which is a social media marketing platform. Uh, what else, Laura? What else uh, besides, you know, once we've kind of figured out what our message is and what our, what our overarching theme, if you like, is, what else should we be doing? Well, so at Edgar specifically, a big thing we believe in is repeating content, which a lot of people um, are, very, are very scared to do. And a lot of people are skeptical when I first bring up this idea because, you know, they think shouldn't everything be original? Shouldn't everything be live? Um, when we're talking about social media in the context of marketing for a business or a message or whatever, it, it, you usually are not going to get an ROI on your time if you're posting everything live all day long. It's just too time consuming. There's too much content. And the idea that you have to create you know, new original pieces of content eight times a day, every day for the rest of your life uh, is what makes social media so overwhelming for entrepreneurs. And, and the truth is that your audience sees, you know, depending on the platform, like five to 10% of your audience sees anything that you post. So to create this great original content, send it out on Twitter once, 5% of people see it that follow you and never send it again. Uh, I just don't think it's a great, a great strategy. So can you literally post something, like how often should you repeat the content mm. then? So a guideline we like to go by for our company is to have about like three months worth of content and then you're repeating quarterly. So you're only repeating four times a year. Obviously it's social, right? You're adding in new stuff. You can add on live stuff on top of this, but this is kind of like your bread and butter. We've seen our customers repeat a lot more frequently than that. Um, I've actually been surprised. I've seen accounts that repeat things like every two to three weeks and it gets the same engagement a few weeks later. It's actually, I've actually been surprised. Like I was kind of skeptical, like, oh, that's, that's a little too soon. Um, but the proof is in the pudding. You can see, like we have a case study on our website for winetracker.co 
Mm. They do this. They'll post something two weeks later, the exact same amount of retweets. Like it's kind of uncanny how similar the amount of retweets is every time. Wow. Okay. So, but you wouldn't do it any less than two to three weeks. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there obviously is a level that could be too much. Like if you're posting literally the same update every hour, all day long, you know, that's, that's going to feel um, like a lot, but even just a few weeks in between um, people okay. likely aren't seeing it again, or if they are, they don't care. So same image, same caption, same everything every two yep. to three weeks. Okay. Um, how many times should we be posting per day? per account, like on a Instagram or Twitter or Facebook or whatever? I mean, the truth is as, as much as you can is kind of the, the real answer. It really is more constrained for a small business by how much time they have. Um, because of the nature of these networks and the way it works is, you know, like especially looking at Twitter, Instagram, you log on, you see what's been posted during that five minute window that you log on and then you log off. So if you didn't send it during the same five minutes that your audience logged on, they're going to miss it. Um, so posting, you know, like I would start with like at least a few times a day. Um, it's actually difficult for a small business to post too much just because of, of the nature of it. Okay. Okay. So we've decided on our theme. We've knowing that we can repeat our content and we're posting as much as we can, but three times a day is a good start. Mm -hmm. we can go up to six. Okay. Very good. What else have we got, Laura? Um, I mean, I would just say you... I, I don't want to overwhelm people with what I've said. You have to pick something that's actually a schedule that you can stick to. And this is where I'm talking about viewing it as a plan instead of like a panic mode thing you do every morning. Mm -hmm. um, so with Edgar, what you can do is load up a content of all your library categorized and then Edgar just pulls it for you, uh, which makes all this a lot easier because you're just building up your library, you know, either once or over time instead of worrying about what's scheduled every single day. If you don't use Edgar, at least you want to use a tool that allows you to schedule ahead of time so you can look at your content, you know, in a week block or in a month block. Like you, you don't want to be doing this live every single day. What you want to be doing live every day is what people call engagement, is logging on, responding, liking, sharing, retweeting, doing that relationship building. Because Edgar's software, Edgar can send out your updates. Edgar cannot form relationships on social media. Okay, so every day you want to respond and share and like and form mm -hmm. relationships. Mm -hmm. but, but in terms of you disseminating content, you want to put that in a, some kind of scheduler system like Edgar. Right, because your audience doesn't know or care whether you send out a tweet from your phone or, you know, from your computer or from a scheduling tool. It's just, it's all, it's all the same. So there's no reason why that people have this idea, like, I need to be sitting down live at the computer when it goes out. Um, mm. And that's, it's just not accurate. So, um, okay, great. I've got a few questions, but I'll, I'll just ask you, is there, what else? What other, what other? No, tip get, go get into your questions, I think. Okay. So, um. How is, uh, which platforms, which social media platforms does Edgar uh, disseminate information from? Like what, uh, and what, do, what does it not do? So it does Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. So it doesn't do everything, anything else. <laughs> okay. So, so that, it, it, there doesn't seem to be one all, all encompassing place where you can hit Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Snapchat, Instagram, mm -hmm. I don't know what the other ones are, but there's a lot, right? There doesn't seem to be one place. I know Hootsuite does what? Hootsuite does Twitter, Facebook, and... Well, the thing is, the tools are all different. So some tools can, like, do Instagram, but they can't actually do Instagram. They just pull up a reminder on your phone for you to log into Instagram and post live. Um, there, there's a reason tools don't do them all. Pinterest is a very, very different tool. Pinterest, you know, yeah. Pinterest is not a text update. Snapchat is obviously a different tool. So, mm. um, I mean, I guess I can just speak for our company. I don't know how other mm. companies do, but we purposefully do not have a way to send it out to all networks at the same time because you're not, you're not doing the same thing on, mm. especially Pinterest or Instagram as you are on the three platforms that we work with. Yeah, I know. And Instagram's a tricky one. You can't really... I actually found a, a program that's as close to being able to send out Instagram posts automatically as possible called Instamate. Have you heard of this, Instamate? Yeah, but it's a lot of... I, I don't know about that one specifically, but all of these are against Instagram's terms and they keep getting shut down is what right. keeps happening. Um, like like Hootsuite is not against their terms, but that's why you can't actually schedule it. It's just like a reminder on your phone and you can't even do it on the computer. You have to go in on your phone. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, with Instamate, it's something I just tried. I remember it well because the word mate is in the end and I'm Australian. So I'm like, right. hey, mate, 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 I remember it. With that one, you can schedule your Instagram posts to go out. However, your computer needs to be on and you need to be connected for, for, for it to go out. So it's a little, it's a little kind of tricky. Um, like a proxy. Yeah. What's the, yeah. the fine print is kind of like you can't schedule it and then switch off your computer. You have to, ha- you have to be logged in and be live in order for it to actually go out. So you can't send it out while you're sleeping. You have to have your computer on. Right, right. And they're kind of probably pretending that you're, you know, hitting a button on your computer, which is why it'll probably get shut down, honestly. That's yeah. what's happened in the past. Mm. Well, anyway, I've been experimenting with that and, and testing it out. I've, I've only been on it a couple of days, but it's the, it's the closest I've come to being mm. able to be able to send it out, you know, put content in, load it up. Um, okay, so... You do Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Now, why LinkedIn? I'm curious about that. Um, Twitter and Facebook, I understand that. I get mm-hmm. it, right? But why LinkedIn? LinkedIn LinkedIn is a weird one for sure. We don't see much traffic from LinkedIn. Um, LinkedIn, I think, is much more powerful for people like sales professionals, people mm-hmm. who are doing that kind of like one-on-one relationship building. Mm-hmm. As far as why we post there, it's just another, it's another outlet. And because the format is similar to Twitter and Facebook, AKA like text-based with a possible mm-hmm. photo, it's like, why not send content to LinkedIn and have content going out there? It'll give you just a, a small boost of traffic without having to do much. But um, yeah, I mean, most people I think are on the same page as you like LinkedIn not as important as Facebook and Twitter. So I'm going to give you a little, I'm going to, let, Laura, let's both come up with one super duper ninja little social media tactic. I've got one that I learned yesterday that I'm going to share, but um, have you got one like in terms of for, to, to do with how Edgar works with Facebook and Twitter, like one super duper little tip that can get you more followers or get you more engagement, whether it's something like something as simple as put RT before you send Twitter out, like retweet this or whether it's like mm-hmm. tag a friend or whatever. Have you got one kind of little super duper one before I share mine? No, you say yours first and I'll decide. Oh, what there I'm you go. Pay. You'll say you're one of those girls. Yeah. yeah. No, you go first. <laughs> so here's the thing. Um, what I learned yesterday from one of the world's top Instagram guys, this is to do with Instagram. So this is not nothing to do with what you do with Edgar, but, but Instagram for all those out there who have an Instagram. Um, if you get someone else, with a, with a lot of followers to like your photo, the algorithm um, now in Instagram sees that and then it shows who, your, who that person liked throughout the day and then other people can see that and then they'll go, oh, who did he like? Let me go there and check, check that out. Maybe I didn't explain that well enough. So let's just say uh, I've got John Smith, I'm making up a name and he has 100,000 followers and I know John Smith in a friendly way. I call up John Smith and say, John, Hey, can you please like my photos today? Can you just like one or two of my images today? And he goes, sure, James, I'll do that for you. And then all of a sudden I wake up the next day and I've got like uh, 200 new likes on my photos or 500 more likes because now in Instagram, people can see which followers liked which photos. And when people see that, they then go out of curiosity and go, let me see what he liked. Oh, okay, cool. Now I'm going to like it. Now I'm going to follow it. Does that make sense? Yeah, I just haven't seen that on Instagram. So yeah, I'm just curious how it works. I'll have to check that out. Mm, there you go. Super. No one, no one's I don't that. know that one. I know. That one's brand new. No one's doing that. No one's doing that. So <laughs> if you want to like, this is a super duper tip, which I shouldn't be sharing because it's a multi-million dollar tip. But if you, if you, if you ask your follow someone you ask a friend who has a lot of followers or a key influencer to like your post and you do that sometimes you can pay people to do that by the way you can actually pay people pay key influencers to like your photos so it turns up in the algorithm and more people come across your stuff you can do that but if you have a friend who has a lot of followers and say hey can you just can you just like my photos people will see that and then like and then be curious enough to see who they're liking and then go and, and follow you. And then all of it, like I, I did the test. Yes. I literally did the test yesterday on an image on uh, a new Instagram account. I started called Swanee's glasses. I, I sell these blue blocking glasses and we've just started the account. Swanee's glasses There's only like 50 followers or whatever. And we posted a photo and I had one friend of mine who has a lot of followers. Um, 
just like one of the photos and that has now had 493 likes. In fact, there you go. I'm going to p- p- hold up the photo. <laughs> that's, that's the, the Swanee's glasses that I promote. And you can see there, if you're, if you're watching, listening on the podcast, you can't see this, but uh, if you go to Swanee's glasses on uh, Instagram, you can see 493 likes and I've only got 150 followers at the moment. Cause I just, I only opened the account 48 hours ago. You see that? So even though I've got 150 followers, that one image got 493 likes just because I had a friend of mine with a lot of followers like it. And then everyone else came across, look at this one, 670 likes. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Versus this one, which has only got 50. He obviously didn't, my friend obviously didn't like that photo. So I've only got 50 likes. Mm. (laughs) Boom. I should be a social media expert. That's what I'm talking about. If you want to, if you're listening on the podcast and you want to see what I'm talking about, just watch this replay on my YouTube channel, which is at James Swanick, uh, or just go to my Instagram or that Instagram account, Swanee's glasses, and you can see what I'm talking about. All right, Laura, I, I did upheld my part of the bargain. Now it's your turn. I want to so, well, mine is kind of of a different genre, but, but inspired by yours. Cause I'm going to be, I'm going to be a bit of a, can I be like a bit of a, a critic to what you just showed us? Oh, are you going to be a troll, Laura? I'm going to troll. No, are you I'm a social be media troll? I'm going to be helpful. So, because <laughs> right. here's, here's something I noticed. So yeah. you got a lot of likes, but you didn't get that many new followers. So no, you got like maybe I didn't 100 that, new followers. I didn't get that many new followers, but I still got new followers. But you still got some, right? Mm-hmm. Right. I still so, got, I think yesterday when we looked at this, I got, uh, we worked out that I got 50 new followers. Mm-hmm. So it was kind of like I had 493 likes and 50 new followers. So it's 10%. So yeah. 10% of the people who liked followed. That seems worth doing. So, so, how, so how can you criticize that? Well, so because what it makes me think of is just the importance of seeing, you know, kind of beyond the initial excitement to like, how is this actually driving traffic to my site? And how is this actually influencing my business? Um, you know what I mean? If I got 10, well, let's just do the math on it, right? Let's just say I had two or three of those friends do that, right? Two or three friends do it. Then I've got 30 new followers from one post. That's worth it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, That's amazing. Right? So it's just become scalable. So now my strategy with that is I draw up a list of all the people I know, like, people with huge followers like Brandon Carter, like Ty Lopez, like um, Sean Stevens, like all these people that I know with huge followers, like Grego Gallagher from Kino Body, who are all in my space. And I'm going to say, guys, can you just start liking my, po- my, mm. my images and I'll start liking yours. And that way we get like this start to gain. Yeah. Things. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, it, my tip, my tip is to always like, to always look and see your actual traffic, you know, go in your Google analytics account. I know it's not that exciting, but I think a lot of people they're like, because you can game this stuff. Right. And this, this one is getting you followers. Mm. Um, there's people who like just buy followers on Twitter. Right. And it's just Mm. bought accounts. And so it might look impressive, but it's not actually growing your business because it's not actually, you know, driving traffic back. So it's like, whenever you're reading, whenever you're trying out a tactic on social, try out the tactic, be like, okay, I tried this tactic. It got me 500 new likes. It got me 30 new followers. Like then let's go see the traffic that Instagram is driving. Let's go see if that traffic is converting, you know, use Google goals to see if it's converting to email signups, to see if it's converting to sales on your website, like follow, you know, follow your social activity all the way through your funnel. Okay. I like that. Before we do a review here, Laura, we're talking to Laura Rhoda from Edgar. Do you have a Do you have a little tip tip for us, Ninja? That wasn't you didn't. I know. I knew you wouldn't like that one. No, I liked it. It was good, <laughs> but I reckon I can squeeze a better one out. An even better one. Give me one more. Well, I know no, I because can... you're you're asking the wrong person. Because I'm kind of weirdly anti. Like I'm kind of weirdly anti hack because. Because people get people get so caught up in following like the short term hacks that sometimes they forget like the big picture strategy. You know what I, I mean? Like I see this with Facebook a lot because Facebook is constantly changing its algorithm. So like one week, if you put uh, a, a gallery of images, then that does really well on Facebook. And the next week, if you put a video and the next week, if you put like long form text mm. and people get so obsessed with like what's going on with Facebook this week, but people kind of miss the forest for the trees because they'll be like, I have to create these like huge image galleries and they do that one week and then they get really burnt out because it doesn't work anymore. And then they stop posting on Facebook as opposed to like, I'm going to post high quality content every day on Facebook. And I'm kind of not going to stress about what's so big this week. And I'm going to be in this for the long game. 
Yeah, um, you're, you're more. You, you're definitely talking about a system. You're just right. talking about a, a system, a machine, a train that just goes bang, 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 which is smart because you should up like you should spend a day or two every month getting all the next thirty days of content ready to go, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. then you don't worry about it. Then you just exactly, bang. exactly, and then you actually have it going out instead of being like, okay, what's the hot new thing? And you're like trying to keep up with that, but then you spend so much time trying to figure out what that was that like now you don't have content for the rest of the month because you just killed yourself creating like ten custom videos, and now next week Facebook doesn't care about video anymore. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like slow and steady. That's my that's that's my style. Good. Well, let's merge slow and steady with a little little hack in the same place. Well, yeah, this is a great interview, right? They can get both. They can yeah. best of both worlds. There you go. I like it. There's no there's no troll like behavior from you at all. Or I've got that. There's all positive energy. I love it. Well, thank you very much. Well, I hope that that's been helpful. How to grow your social media and spend less time doing it. Let's just uh, review what uh, Laura Roder from Edica uh, went over with us here. Um, she's all about batching your workflow. So viewing it as a strategic marketing channel versus all like having to quickly race around and do something on a daily basis. Um, Repeat your content. You should know that only five to 10% of your audience is going to see any of your posts. So have three months of content and then repeat, you know, every three months, or you can repeat every two to three weeks. Um, Laura has seen work. Uh, It gets the same engagement. So that's good news. I wonder if you can then repeat the content that you've repeated. Do you think? Yes. Absolutely. So that means you, does that mean you only ever need three weeks of content and then you just repeat it for the, the whole year? You refresh it. You know what yeah, I mean? You kind of, really well, because then you're curating instead of like panic posting, right? You're looking, mm-hmm. because then you can actually step back and be like, okay, well, what's performing well? What's not performing well? What do we want to put more of in? What do we want to take out? And you're kind of mm-hmm. curating this like body of posts instead of that. everything new all the time. I love that. Yeah. Uh, pick a schedule you can stick to. Um, don't do it live. like you don't want to be running around every day. Pick a schedule uh, and then make sure you do do this every day though. Respond and share and like and form relationships every day. And then just know that with Edgar, with Laura's platform, Edgar, you can load all of your content into one library and schedule it out on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. So if you are in that game, you have a business, you're wanting to grow it, you're wanting to grow your Twitter followers, your Facebook followers, and your LinkedIn account, do reach out to Laura Rota in uh, Austin, Texas. Uh, you can find out more about Edgar at meetedgar.com. Is that right, Laura? That's yeah, correct. Is it? That's Meet- correct. And you can make sure, make sure you follow Laura on Twitter and see what she's doing. It's Laura Rota, um, which is L- at LKR, right? LKR. Yep. yep. Uh, and what, what are you on Facebook, Laura? Yeah, I don't do public Facebook. I think I have an old page there. Okay, cool. So follow her on Twitter and just reach out to her at meetedgar.com and just tell her that you heard uh, her speak on the James Swanick Show podcast or you saw her on this YouTube channel uh, or wherever else you may be seeing this uh, at the moment. So, Laura, thank you very much. This was, um, this was super helpful. Do you want to do a little, uh, a little one point for my uh, Snapchat followers? Hang on. Oh, so here we go. This so is exciting. Do, here we go. We're going to do a little thing here. So I'm going to go three, two, one, and you're going to go, I'm going to go one tip, one social media tip, okay? But you've got about seven seconds to give it. Have you got it in? You got it ready to go? Here yeah. Three, two, one. Laura Rhoda, social media expert. What's a social media tip? Get off Snapchat and get on a platform. You can actually schedule. Oh, there you go. <laughs> oh, well, I see what you did there. I see what you did I, there. I trolled your Snapchat. Social media expert just trolled, <laughs> just trolled my Snapchat. <laughs> what are, uh, are you on Snapchat at all? No. Oh, there we go. So I'm going to Laura R O just trolled my Snapchat. I'll put some little, little. And now I'm, I won't even be there to defend myself. What I've made such a mess. <laughs> Laura Rota, thank you very much. That was a, so you are a troll after all. <laughs> true. You're trying to, my you're true trying colors. To just innocence, but you're really just a troll. <laughs> I'm just joking. Laura, thank you so much. I really appreciate the time. Make sure you check out meetedgar.com, meetedgar.com. If you wanted to grow your Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn, hope you enjoyed this. Make sure you uh, share this with someone now that you think might get benefit from this. If you uh, have someone who has who relies on social media, go and get them to share it. And uh, make sure, please do leave a review if you're, if you're listening to this on the podcast. Go and give this a four or a five star review or two star if you didn't. <laughs> obviously. Maybe um, they didn't like the trolling. I don't know. Yeah. 
and then share it. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one. See ya.